Mike Lodge. I am the business advisor. And today here in South Carolina, there's not a cloud in the sky, beautiful blue skies. Sun is coming through the woods in the back of my house here. And it's a beautiful day. But it's 33 degrees. It's cold. It's a cold day. If you do that in Celsius, it's even worse. It's 0.55. <laughs> it's not even a, at 1%, or not even at 1 degree, I mean. So it's cold. It's a cold, cold morning. But I love it. I went out and changed all my light bulbs all around the house outside. Put in brand new spanking new light bulbs. Looks good. I was reading an article this morning that was published on the Associated Press. Anyway, it reads like this, so we're going to read just a little bit of it. A report published by the Associated Press Thursday highlighted the devastating impact inflation is having on American seniors. While the CPI report released earlier this week showed inflation fell to 7.1%. Now, uh, that is so misleading. That 7.1% is comparison from 2022 to 2021. Okay, so we're 7% still higher than where we were at in 2021. So this nonsense that inflation is dropping, no, it's not dropping. It's not dropping at all. So it went on and said the AP article highlighted the story of Lenore Angie, who was forced to return to work at age 76 this year in order to afford the cost of food and medicine for her ill husband. The holidays are going to be tough, she said, and it's not just for seniors. Engie told the AP, luckily my daughter-in-law did the cooking for Thanksgiving and I brought a few dishes, but the Christmas celebration will definitely be more modest. Inflationary pressures may be starting to ease, but higher prices throughout much of 2020 are still taking a toll on the older population, the older adults of America. With a large share of people like Angie saying they felt their finances were worse off than the year before. Which it is. It's 7% off. Higher. It's 7% higher than prior years. I mean, this really upsets me because when the president comes out and says, yes, we're reducing inflation. No, you're not reducing inflation. That 7% is from comparison from from this year to last year. And we're up. We're still up compared to the 3% that we were at. So Americans are suffering, and the older American is really suffering because most of them are very much on limited income. Social Security, uh, maybe some 401k uh, money that's coming through, but it comes in very little, not enough to cover the costs of full-time living. And so older Americans are suffering. Younger Americans are suffering. All Americans are suffering. It's kind of like the Black Lives Matter movement, right? And then everybody said, no, all lives matter. Well, in this situation, all lives do matter because inflation has not corrected itself. It's getting worse. Now, if you look at the fuel, the fuel has gone down, but that's only because we are pumping in Oil reserves that are supposed to be for reserves in a bad time and not supposed to be used for situations like this. We could produce more oil if we wanted to. But the Biden administration has limited that. And they're not doing what they need to do to open up the ability of oil companies to produce more oil. And not only that, but we've lost a lot of refineries. And when we don't have enough refinery to, to refineries to produce enough gas and oil and everything else we need, prices go up. Limited amount of product creates a higher amount of cost. It's just how it works. And if you look, I mean, if you go to the uh, shopping malls, they're empty. No one's buying anything. Everyone has reduced their spending costs because they just can't afford it. Now, what can we do about this? Well, we can do something about it, and that is we can sit down and go over our budgets 
see what we can and cannot do. Some of us might not be able to watch those Netflix anymore or Hulu or HBO or anything. I mean, at the moment, I do not have cable. I don't have cable. And I haven't had cable for four years now. And the reason why is because there are so many other options out there that are free that you don't have to pay for. And it still keeps you entertained, especially YouTube. My gosh, I tell you, YouTube has so many good documentaries on there that are free of charge. You have travel documentaries where you can travel all over the world. And even in the United in, in the United States, there is so much more options than just buying cable, HBO, and Cinemax, and all that other stuff. Some of us are going to have to cut that out because that's almost two hundred dollars right there. So as you, I was uh, I hate to tell this story again, but I've told it before. I was in, I was in the. Uh, grocery store the other day and I was going down the coffee aisle and I needed to buy coffee and I buy the probably the cheapest coffee there is out there. I don't know why people is, are trying to send me messages when I'm trying to record. They do this every single time. But uh, I was walking down the, the aisle and there's this old man. He must have been about 80 80 years old and, and he was buying his coffee and he bought the you know the big jars of coffee. And he stood there and he was looking at the jar and then finally it burst out of him and he said, this is $10 more than what I paid for it last week. And he put the thing back on the shelf because he couldn't afford it. It was too much. I mean, there are times when I go through that store and I, and I look at stuff and I say, my gosh, I got to put some of this stuff back. I have got to live within my budget. If you look at at what the cost of food is, on me, it runs about $150. And I can't do it every week. I can't do $150 every week because that just cuts away at other stuff that I need to pay. I tell you, it's it's a tough situation. For older individuals on limited incomes that are out there, And I see them every single day. Well, not every single day, but the days that I go to the store, I see them reading the the prices, going down the aisle and checking out what all the other prices are to try to get to the lowest price that they can. And if you look at their grocery carts, there are hardly any food in there. Six, seven, maybe up to ten items. And But their items that they feel that they can afford. So we see that not just happening with the, with the elderly and the older communities, but we see it also happening in each of our lives as we go shopping. So listen, inflation is still there. Inflation is going to get worse. Citibank has already said, Citibank and some other banks have already said that it's going to get tougher. By the way, Goldman Sachs this morning announced that they are going to lay off 4,000 people. That's a lot of people. For one company, 4,000 people, that's a lot. Why have? Why are they doing it? It's because they're not meeting their expectations. The financials on, are bad. They're losing money. Now, knowing that Goldman Sachs is losing money, they're laying off 4,000 people and probably more question has got to be asked how stable are the are, are the banks is the banking system solvent and i would probably guesstimate that probably no they're not solvent if you look at the deposits that are going into the banks it's almost at zero because as soon as the deposit goes into the bank it's spent to pay for all of the expenses during these inflationary times so you have to wonder if no money is going into the banks, if they're having defaults on their credit cards, on their auto loans, on their housing payments, on their commercial loans, you have to wonder how solvent are these banks. In fact, some of them are even limiting the amount of money that you can take out of your bank. 
I've heard it go down to 45 bucks. You can only take 45 bucks out today. So we have to add, and I'm, I don't see the feds asking the question. I don't see Congress asking this, the question. I don't see the Senate asking the question. But I, as a business guy, I'm asking that question because we have some red flags going up. And the red flag is if you're laying off people, that means that your cash flow just isn't sufficient enough to cover those people and to cover the ongoing costs of operations. My voice is about ready to go. I'm going to have to speed this up. But do you hear what I'm saying is that you and I, we have got to watch our banks very, very carefully now. Some people are having, are having a difficult times just withdrawing money, withdrawing cash to buy something. They're having that big of a problem. So each and every single one of us have got to demand of our congressmen, of our Senate, of the uh, FDIC, of the, uh, uh, the Federal Reserve, how safe are the banks? Is it, do they have enough money to be working on? Do they have enough cash capital that they can work on? Or are they losing so much money that they are at risk at the moment? That's why I've been telling a lot of you, have some cash in the bank just, I mean, not in the bank, have some cash in your house just in case something happens with the banks. Put a cash reserve aside just in case. Because we're getting red flags here. And those red flags are a, a waving here, and we need to force our members of Congress and Senate to start asking that question. Where do we stand in the banking world? Are we solvent? Are we safe? Are the depositors safe? I mean, we saw what happened with FTX. I mean, that was a fraud. FDIC, a couple months ago, put out a warning to all banks, do not get involved in, in, in cryptocurrency or Bitcoin because it is a risk to the bank. And sure enough, FTX was a risk. Huge risk. And other companies like it are risks. We're living in some different times, aren't we? Ask, ask your bank how solvent they are. Ask your Congress and members of the Senate who represent you, hey, can you please look into the banking situation because we might be in a, a red flag zone. It's sad, isn't it? Listen, if you want to have more access to me, in business advice, you can go to www.lodge-co.com. Again, that's www.lodge-co.com. I'll talk with you again tomorrow. God bless. Love you all. Bye-bye. <laughs>